Good morning, Paris. Good morning, BMP. It's really great to be with you today. I'm virtual for a very good reason. In one hour from now, we start our own European Stability Mechanism annual meeting when all the ministers of finance of the euro area are coming to our premises. And later on today, the euro group will take place here in Luxembourg, the first one after the European elections. Let me start with those European elections. These were the 10th European elections, and it's one of the largest democratic processes in the world, with more than 300 million citizens eligible to vote in 27 countries electing 720 seats. More than 50% of those citizens turned up in these elections. And some countries, like Belgium and Bulgaria, used them also for their national parliaments. The winners? Well, first of all, the Conservatives of Ursula von der Leyen, and secondly, the populist parties. The ones that were hit most? The Liberals and the Greens. So we will see a shift to the right in the European Parliament. What drove this? If you look at the latest Eurobarometer, which was conducted in April and May this year, European citizens had three top focus areas for the EU. The war in Ukraine, immigration and the international situation. Economics, finance, inflation, are not in the top three anymore. And how did markets react? Well, they did react. The market reaction was mainly driven by France. And we saw the French-German spread go to COVID levels. Now, was this purely the election? I would say it was a combination of factors. It's the fiscal part, the election uncertainty, and the latest downgrade. Populism doesn't per se mean a spread widening. We saw that with the recent Dutch national elections in November, when a more right-wing and populist election outcome and government was due to be in place and the spreads didn't widen. If I look at our own institutions, the EU, EAB and ESM, there was a little bit of spread widening, but that was partially started after the ECB the rate cuts and then a bit after the European elections, but all in reasonable terms. Now, it is important to start thinking about the future. What are the priorities for the next five years? I think they will be different. And in the last one and a half years, we spent at ESM time to visit all our shareholders of the 20 countries of the Eurozone, but also we spend a lot of time with policymakers. And we see three new priorities emerging. The first one is defense and security. Migration is part of that. The second is strategic independence and competitiveness. And the third one is single market and capital markets union. To get a little bit of a feeling where we might be heading, the letter report, Noyer report, and Draghi report are putting us in the right direction. And on the right side, you also see that this is what citizens want. For the next five years, they put security and defense on the top of the priority list. Now, when I travel globally, I often get the question, is Europe united? And the simple answer is yes. We have seen a record support to the Economic and Monetary Union and the euro, as you can see in this chart. We see Europeans feel more European. They feel European and national or only European, but the support to a European citizenship is growing. And we see stronger European institutions. In March this year, we crossed the one trillion mark of the European safe assets. These are the EU, EAB, and ESM and EFSF. But this is just 36% of the capacity of the EU and the ESM. My own institution, the ESM, has 422 billion available funds. And this is growing because of scheduled repayments. So the institution and financing is there for the new priorities. It's also good to see where we come from and where we go. 
we have achieved a lot in the last decade. A stronger architecture with Banking Union, NextGen EU, the ESMA, EOPEN, EBA, and our own institution, the European Stability Mechanism. And we need an ambitious agenda ahead of us. The complete banking union, so the backstop to the single resolution fund after the approval of the ESM treaty. We need to push forward capital markets union and mitigate some of the resistance that's out there. And we need to focus on the new priorities, defense and security. So let me bring this to an end. If you ask me, I think we'll get more Europe after these elections, but with different priorities. While the last five years were very much around the Green Deal and the COVID response, the next five years will be more around defense and security, strategic independence and competitiveness, and the single market and capital markets union. But if there is one thing that you need to remember after this, Europe is stronger. We have an architecture, institutions and firepower to fulfill these needs. Thank you very much and goodbye from Luxembourg to Paris and hope to see you next time in person. Thank you very much.